Hi everyone, welcome back to another session of Azure DevOps training. In this session, I'm going to give you a quick overview on repos and version control, all right? So before I tell you what a repo is, I want to show you how repos look in Azure DevOps org, okay? So I'm going to switch to my Azure DevOps org. So here, if I, you can see that this is my Azure DevOps environment. And here I've created multiple organizations and these are the project in this particular organization. If I open this project, then I have a tab called repos, okay? So if I open this now, it says that agile process, this is the project name that I've given. It is empty, add some code. That means this particular repo is, for now it is totally empty, okay? So let's say for this particular project, like you know, uh, multiple developers would be working on this project, right? So everybody, whoever would be like, you know, working on some code or like, you know, for the, the whole code of your software, right? All the development work that you would have done, you have to maintain that code somewhere, right? So in order to maintain that code somewhere on the server, you can create a code repository in your Azure DevOps and you can keep a copy of all the code that you have written for your project, okay? So that is nothing but called a repo or you can also call it as a repository. So repositories a place where you have kept all your code which is related to your product okay or your like you know software whatever you have been developing under a project all right so now let's just go back to this board and i want to show you what a version control is okay so i am going to actually uh draw something for you so let me open the annotation Okay, so let's say there are three people working in a project, okay, developer one, developer two, and developer three, okay, and you don't have any code repository, okay, you don't, you are not maintaining any code repository on the server, okay, now let's say this person, this developer is working on some change, so he is going to create one project, so let's say he has created one project, okay, so you can say uh, he has created one project. All right. And then he has made some changes to this project. Okay. Now this person also has to make some changes to this particular project on some particular file. So he, this person will also create a copy of the project. Okay. So this is going to be the copy two of the same project. Okay. So this is one project. He created his own project. This person created his own project and this person will also create his own project. Okay. Now, everybody has created their own project and they have been working on their changes. But at one point, once everybody has uh, completed the development, you have to merge everyone's code into one single project, correct? So traditionally, how will you do it, right? So this person has to send his code to this person, right? Developer number two. And developer number two can review the change and he has to merge his change along with this person's change, right? So once he has a final copy, he can send that final copy to developer number three and then the developer number three will again like, you know, review the copy sent by this particular developer and then he is going to merge his change, right? So just imagine how much manual effort is required in this, right? And it is also not a very efficient way of working, correct? So what, like, you know, what, what is the solution? What else can you do? So you can create a single project, okay? And you have to tell everyone that you don't have to create your own projects. This is the single, like, you know, final project. This is the final project. And whenever you have to do any kind of changes, then you have to do on this final copy of the project. Okay. But now what is the problem over here? What will happen? Let's say developer number one, he has to make some changes and developer number two also has to make some changes. This person also has to work on this project. Then only one person will be able to work at a time, right? And you can still not maintain any kind of change history. You will not be able to see that like, you know, who has changed what file and when that person changed any kind of like, you know, file, okay? And you can also not revert to an earlier state, right? Let's say there's a file, file one available here. If one person actually opens this particular project and he changes one file, your file, your this particular project is not automatically going to track all the changes. And also if he wants to like, you know, if he has already made some changes, he has like, you know, saved it, then there is also like, you know, no way for him to actually revert back to the previous version of the code, right? So that is another problem. And then you also have to maintain multiple copies, right? If you want to actually keep track of each and every version, if you want to know that what this person has done, then you can, you have to create one copy for this particular change. And if you want to 
see like you know what this person has done then you have to maintain another copy if you want to see what this person has done you have to maintain an another copy and even though when you merge right let's say if you have to deploy your code from one or or organization to another organization then you will be creating another copy for that right so this this kind of approach is not very efficient and it is like you know still manual right then what else can you do what you can do is uh, let me just so there's something called version control okay version control is nothing but you can say that it's a system or it's a tool and git is one of the examples right so git or like you know tfvc these are the examples of the version control systems okay so let's say if i talk about git then what you can do is that this particular project you can keep on the server under like you know you can create a repo using git version control system and you can keep your project or like you know every piece of code into this particular repository and anybody who has to make any changes onto this, they need to clone this particular project and they have to clone a copy of this and into their local system, they have to make those changes. Once they are done with the changes, then they are going to push that changes into this particular repository. So basically they will first pull the code from this repository, which is available on the server. Okay. They are going to pull this code. Okay. And then they will make their changes. Once they are done with their changes, and once they feel comfortable, like, you know, that they are confident about the changes that they, they have done, they have to push this code to the repository, which is available on the server. Okay. And everybody, like, you know, all the other developers has to do, do the same activity. And then after that, like, you know, all the merging and all the other activity that needs to be done, this particular version control system, right? Whatever you are using, if you are using Git, then Git version control system is going to take care of it, okay? And let's say if there are any conflicts, let's say if this person worked on file number five, this person also worked on file number five, and let's say in file number five, he has made some changes on line number 10, and this person also has made some changes on line number 10. So on the same line, they have made some changes, then Git is going to show you the conflict, right? That on this file, you have made a change, and on this file, on line number 10, somebody else also has to made like you know has made a change so either you decide that which like you know whose change you are going to keep or you can like you know basically if you uh, like you know if you want to merge out like you know you have to basically coordinate with the developer and decide that like you know what change he has done on the same line so in that way you need to coordinate and you need to resolve the conflict but let's say if this person is working on file number five this person is also working on file number five but they have made changes onto different lines this person has made change on let's say line number two, three, and five. This person has made some changes on line number 10, 11, and 12, right? So these kind of things are going to get merged automatically by the Git version control system. You don't have to manually do anything, okay? So this is the uh, example of version control system. And this is the reason that why we use version control system. And also that like, you know, any change that anybody is doing, if you actually go and open the repository, if you open a particular file, you will be able to see the history of that file, okay? That who has made what change and at what line like you know at such granular level you will be, you will be able to see the details okay so these are the these are some benefits of the version control system and obviously there are a lot of more benefits of version control system but this is the basic concept of actually using a version control system all right so i hope that now you have an idea about what is a repository and what why do we use a version control system all right so i'll see you in the next session till then uh keep watching and bye bye